Uh, Professor Gura, thank you so much for joining. Uh, so let's uh, discuss today an exciting uh, theme we are both so passionate about, the insights on how to make our kids be best versions of themselves uh, in the current world. And uh, we are talking with you uh, from May's Kids, uh, and we are looking to hear your interesting and insightful thoughts on this topic. So let's start from what are top three uh, skills you would name for kids to develop in the current world? Uh, does it depend on age, social and economic conditions? Can you elaborate on that? What do you think this top uh, three skills, top three most important skills are? Uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. And I think the concept of skills is a very interesting concept. When we when we talk about schools and subjects, we're, we're often very clear, well, we're very often very clear what we mean by the subject. So French is learning the French language. Geography is about uh, uh, spaces, lands, people, etc. History, mathematics, you name it. When it comes to skills, we are far less clear what that definition is. So I think that is also why over over the years we've we've kind of struggled in inverted commas to make inroads with skills development in a schooling system that is so precise. So skills testing is very different than sitting an examination or a test, for example. So that to start with. And the second observation is that I think that increasingly that I'm never quite sure anymore whether I'm speaking about skills or behaviours. And I think there's a clear overlap. And I think we, we, we also need to be reasonably relaxed about that overlap. And then thirdly, I wanted to give you an example before I answer those, those three, but I think it's an important example. In 1999, which feels like a very long time ago now, I was working in South Manchester in an area called Withenshaw, uh, where the footballer Marcus Rashford is from, uh, and and I was this was under the under the Tony Blair government, and they developed something called Education Action Zones, and the concept of Education Action Zones was quite straightforward. It was a concept whereby, uh, in areas of significant disadvantage, the pub, the private sector and the public sector would work together for the benefit of. Of, of the education of children. And in my case, that was Manchester Airport PLC. And, and I actually had an office in Manchester Airport. And at the time, there were approximately 250 companies inside the airport from catering to airlines to you name it. Yeah? So what we did is we did with a number of people, a skills survey. And the question we asked 250 companies Essentially, the question was, when you are interviewing a 16, 17 or 18 year old for a job, what are the three key things, skills, what are the, 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 the key things you're looking for? And we got 250 answers times three. So I put those in a very nice PowerPoint presentation. And, and I used that a lot at the time, and it was very impactful because it was quite a big thing, etc. And, um, and then many years later, after COVID in 2022, I was speaking at a conference about skills development. And I went back and I found this PowerPoint slide of, of by then 20 plus years old. And I used exactly the same slide and everybody went this is revolutionary this is quite amazing right. and and actually when we look at the skills that are about employability and 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 being successful in life not just not just professionally they are of course about communication they are of course about confidence they are of course about resilience not in that sense hardly anything has changed of course, the pace of things may have changed. The context may have changed. We've got massive uh, uh, technology now, where where in 1999 that was that was far less. So, but in principle, those things remain the same. So, so now I'll go, I'll go to your question about children, and and which three skills. 
and I think the the first skill that I would wish upon every child is positive curiosity. Being curious, I think, comes naturally in in young beings. Yeah? When my two dogs were puppies, they were incredibly curious. They were more curious than they are now. I think I think children have that. So it seems there is something about that space of youth that makes you curious. It is to maintain that because actually, as my 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 friend Sir Ken Robinson used to say, we teach the curiosity out of children like we teach the creativity out of children. And I think that's a very serious thing. And when I say we, I, I don't mean teachers and schools, I mean governments and departments for education and inspectorates, etc. cetera. Um, so positive curiosity would be the first one. Working with others, teamwork, partnership, whatever word you want to give to that would be the second one. The curiosity is something that will serve you well through life and it will lead you to form, there's a process of forming good judgments. Yeah. The teamwork, the partnership, I think increasingly it will become very difficult to do things on your own. And I think there is a joy also to be had in working and learning with other people. And I think the third one is... Um, Positive resilience, not giving up. I think it's such an imp and the positive is so important, just like positive curiosity is. Because I think at the moment we occupy quite a negative world. And, and I think that negative world is brought about by, by events that in many cases are beyond our controls, be they conflicts or wars or, or, or natural disasters, other things we can do something about. Um, but I think also the impact of, of social media, etc., means that everybody seems to be very angry and everybody seems to be very negative. And I think the positivity sits well in it. I, I, I want to add a fourth one. But really the fourth one runs through the other three. And that is self-confidence. I was about to ask you about confidence in all of this. Yeah. But, but, I, but I think I, I'd almost say that is not a separate skill. I think that is something that runs through everything we do, the more confident, and there's a distinct difference incidentally between confidence and arrogance, right? Uh, the, the, the more self-confident we can be, the higher our self-esteem is, the better we will be curious, the better we will be resilient, the better we will be a team player, the better our lives will be. And, and I think that's an incredibly important thing. Now, I just want to go back to that chart of 1999 and kind of say all those things were in there in 1999. I think what what has happened over time is that the priority of those things changes sometimes with time. So I think self-confidence is even more important now than it was then, as I would say, is resilience and, and the curiosity side of things.